season. Okay, Brett. Welcome to the Raw Podcast. It's exciting. Yes, yeah. and you are such a ram. I, yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, yes you I are. Am. I drive one and I am one. That's yes, how it works. Yes, you are. Yeah. A really authentic man. And you know what, Brett? You have been with me from the start of this journey when I actually did a show, as you said, just came up on your memories. I didn't realize it was four years ago today. Four years ago. That we launched the Mom and Caregiver Live show. Yeah, and I also think I wore a Santa suit that day, you too. You did. And then we had a sex, not that you're not sexy, but we had a sexy Santa as oh, well yeah, with a shirt yeah. off, remember? Well, some people look better with their shirt off. I'm more of a shirt on type guy. Well, I wanted to make sure that we included everybody. Everyone felt I appreciate included. that. Included. All I appreciate body that. types, right? That's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. First question I ask everybody yes. on the podcast is, what does authenticity mean to you? Ah. Uh, for me, I think it is just being your true self. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, there's so many people these days that are, that are fake. And I believe that, uh, I've been accused of it myself in the past. And that's something that I'm just gonna be me. Right. And that's really what I feel is, uh, is my most authentic self. And I think that, uh, take me for I, who I am. You know, I'm a, I'm a fun loving, good time guy. And I just like to have a good time. Take it or Take it or leave it. That's really how it is. And I love how you always bring so much personality to everything you do. And I can see that the people that are insecure and not confident within themselves find you as a threat. It happens. And <laughs> it happens. It, it, it does. <laughs> I've, I've said that before. And I, 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 at one point I felt guilty about it where I had people that would tell me that when I showed up, the attention got taken away from them. And I hated that. And I felt bad for it, and I didn't want to do things, and it frustrated me. So I said, you know what? I, I, I got to the point where I said, no, I'm just going to be me, and you know, take it for what it is. If some people can't handle that, and they feel threatened by it, that's on them. That's not on me. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That's what I felt. So did you find because I, I am not going to bring it back to me, but I kind of am in a, for a minute. Well, you should. I found that I would always be dimming my light. Because yeah. I'd walk in somewhere and I was the woman of color. I was the bigger girl. I was the girl that, you know, why Why does she think she's all that? So I started to listen to that and I started to believe it. And all those voices from the past really kept me down. Uh, we all have broken pieces. That's right? for sure. We Definitely. do. Yeah. But then don't you find as you become more, and I think authenticity is ever evolving as you evolve as a person and I've said this before at age 16 if you'd asked me what authenticity was I'd be like what the hell does that even mean and what it means to me today versus what it might mean to me five years from now as I keep evolving it's gonna change in my belief I have someone that's kind of my yin to my yang right, right. that kind of is the exact same energy as I am and has the same light um, and I married her and that's something that for me really helps me because now I can see someone that is the same thing, is the same way, is doesn't shy, doesn't matter, doesn't care what anybody else thinks, shows up in that room and just brightens it all up. Okay, so I have a question because I've yes. heard this a few times and I don't want to be offensive at all, nope, but I'm it. just going to keep it real. Yep. So every post that you and Crystal put up yep. is happy and beautiful and shining and yep. people have said what a fucking bullshit story yep and i actually know the two of you yep and i see you are we what are you see 100 percent genuine now don't let that we fight all the time of course you do all the time we're both extremely passionate piece people we're both a personalities and we both have tons of broken pieces so what you see is two people that generally love each other you mm -hmm. see two people that generally care about each other and genuinely are the biggest cheerleaders for the other person. So it doesn't matter what we're doing, what she's doing. She's getting an award. She's on a committee. I'm all over you know, promoting her and showing how amazing she is. Not that she even needs that, but that's what we do because we genuinely care for each other. Do you ever show the broken sides to... Oh, yeah. Well, it comes out. It, and that's part of... The one thing we started from the beginning is honesty. And we both have a past. Some things we're not proud of. Some things um, we love about ourselves. So there were good times and bad times. And we all had past relationships. Right. And 
we had you know parents and families that molded us to who we are and we're all products of our environment yes. whether that's with relationships family friends everything but um, so we have broken pieces so what would you say is your most broken piece well uh, for me I have um, that's uh, kind of tough. I've got a lot. <laughs> but, I mean, for me, um, going through divorce and having um, two kids was very difficult. Um, making some not-so-great choices um, to either cause the divorce or to finalize the divorce. Um, I was a person my whole life that never cheated. I went through relationship after relationship, and whether they worked out or they never worked out, right. but... Uh, you know, then I got to the point where, I'll be real with you, it's, um, I had, uh, when my ex-wife, when she got pregnant, um, I didn't know what to do. And I was lost. And I was a good Catholic boy. And I said, well, I, we gotta get married. That's what happens. Um, I never wanted to get married. I never, I never fully really wanted kids, to be honest. And, uh, and now, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. I love my kids. Yeah. They're yeah. phenomenal. Um, they're, you know, they're, I'm so proud of both of them. They're both so different for me, but so amazing in their own beliefs and their own passions. And I couldn't imagine my life without them. Um, but that left me in a relationship that I wasn't necessarily happy in. So you made it work for the kids? Like you we stayed? Did for a long how, time. How long were you together? I was married for 11 years. Okay. Um, so... Um, and I would say the first, um, two or three were okay. Right. Um, but we really drifted apart. Um, she was older than me, we had different ideas of things, um, uh, whether it would be work, business, uh, extracurricular activities, you know, sports and things like that. So we were very different people. And I think as the longer we were together, we kept trying to keep it together and I came from a household that, you know, I had parents that, you know, maybe should have got divorced, you know, and they stayed together for the kids and had that same belief that that's what they did it for was for the kids. So would you give that advice to anyone? Because I wouldn't. I, I think that you're <clears throat> actually doing, and, and no disservice. judgment, I, I do feel you're doing a disservice to your children if you're just staying for the kids because they're going to feel that energy. They're going to pick up on it. And I know for reasons, financial reasons sometimes, sometimes because you think the kids aren't going to be able to deal with it, but kids actually are quite, kids quite are resilient, right? And, and especially my kids, because I, I noticed it with them. And at first, um, it was tough. My daughter was uh, 10 uh, at the time, and my son was 12. Um, both old enough to know what was going on and couldn't quite understand. Right. Um, it was a very difficult time, but... You know, they were um, amazing. You know, like they really uh, shined. And then along came Crystal. And now we've got like this, you know, triple-headed monster parent group that kind of uh, co-parents. And, you know, the kids have a fun stepmom that spoils them rotten and loves them ridiculously amount. And, you know, my Crystal ends up talking to my ex-wife more than I do. So it's oh it's a really good situation, and we're very lucky. So I'm, I, I, we live a pretty blessed life that way. And the kids are loved by three people that, you know, will literally do anything for them. So did you and Crystal ever want to have children? Um, we talked about it. Um, I had um, had a vasectomy, um, and uh, we looked at different ways of, of getting around that. And it was something that... Um, my vasectomy was not a good time, and I have talked about it in the past, so it's it's not uh, too much secret, but uh, it almost killed me. Oh. So I was hospitalized and uh, had an infection, fever of 104, and uh, yeah, so I was in the hospital for over a week, and uh, it was not a fun time. So part of me doesn't want to do anything to, to, <laughs> to go down that road. Awaken that? Yeah, to go around <laughs> that, uh, yeah. And, you know, and I've got two kids now. They're 18 and 16, and I mean... Um, part of me right now is feels that it's I'm I don't know I'm I'm a little maybe a little selfish because I think you that's know, being raw and honest yeah I mean really I think uh, I am a little selfish I love I love our time right. that we have together I love our vacations together I love our life together 
um, I wouldn't want to see a change. And I think that's the selfish part of me that, that says that I've had the kids, I've had them, you know, to this point, 18 and 16, and they're getting to the point where they don't care if I'm around or not. Right. You know, they've got their phones, they've got their friends, they've got their own lives. Um, you know, to go down that road and, and have another child, um, there's a small part of me that would like that. But there's also a larger part that says, you know what, I love my life right now. And, I, and I'm selfishly, I think, saying that that's what I want. Now, what about Crystal? Like, does she feel like she's... I, I know she's a great, great stepmom yeah. to your two beautiful children. She's a mama bear through and through. And right. I think there's a part of her that, uh, that uh, would like that. But at the same time, I also know that she's... She would succeed at anything she does. Like, she's just right. honestly... Um, she's a marksman she hits every target so if she wanted a kid she'd find a way to make it happen okay. <laughs> so you said you have never cheated in any relationship so this is where I, I never did up until um, uh, I had a an indiscretion let's put it that way I did cheat uh, okay. with my ex uh, with my ex-wife okay. um, and it was a it wasn't a proud moment for me, but I was in a pretty dark place. And I think that's where it got me to was, uh, I had years of, not neglect is the wrong word, but I just, we just were missing each other. Right. And it just, you know, uh, whether I was working too much or um, she wasn't working and there was stresses with finances and, and the kids were younger and, you know, things just weren't, we just missed each other. Right. And that's really what, what it came down to. And, you know, the more that I went out, to help with my business and community and I met more people and then um, you know I, I let I think I let my light uh, out and mm -hmm. people saw that and I really liked the attention from it I was just gonna say you probably it, got the attention that you was, weren't getting at home, home and that's important and so that leads me to my next question from a male's perspective, because I hear this a lot. Once yep. a cheater, always a cheater. And I don't think that's true. I and don't I think, I, again, we're a product of our environment. I think uh, a happy man doesn't cheat. Exactly. Uh, a fulfilled man doesn't cheat. Um, I can't even think of cheating now in my life. I've, I've always, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly, there's nothing more I could want, even selfishly. There's not, if I thought, this is what I want, I'm, I have it. Like it's, I'm, I'm a very fulfilled, happy man. I can't complain at all. So, and you've seen Crystal. I'm a very lucky yes. man. She's a beautiful, beautiful yes. woman in, in all aspects, not just physically, no, and, you but know, her looks wise, but, but she's a beautiful soul. That's the, actually, you know, the, the Santa suit's kind of symbolic. I okay. mean, um, we met um, in 2015 at a book launch. Um, oh no, sorry, at a, at a moment at a speaking event. Right. And uh, we connected a year later um, where um, we were at a, a book launch. And then later that year, uh, she was in a book and I showed up in the Santa suit because it was a book launch in December. Oh my goodness. And we had, that, we had a great time that night. Um, I had been going through my separation at the time. And uh, we ended up connecting um, on Facebook and talking more and getting more connected. And, and it was, you know, this suit gets brought up quite often, so it's got to. Love it. So this is great that you're here tonight. Absolutely, it. absolutely. It's and I had no idea about no, this, so absolutely. this is special. This it is tis the season. Tis the season. We just season. wear the Santa suit and it oh, just puts oh, a smile oh. on my face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it, that's kind of uh, you know kind of our history. It kind of worked that way, and uh, you know we just started talking. And we what worked for us was the values. Our values aligned, and that's really what it comes back to is that so we both. Important. You know give back to the community we both you know, work very hard on our careers so we're both career driven uh, we're both big at giving back to the community mm -hmm. and I mean our values really aligned so if you had to say what you what drives you the most crazy about crystal in a not in a not in a sexy way not in a sexy way <laughs> and so the one difference we have is I was raised that if you're on time, you're late. Crystal's never on time, ever, <laughs> never, ever on time. I, I call it crystal time. If we want to leave, if I want to leave by you know seven thirty, I tell her that we have to leave by seven. 
I've got it down to a science where I know it's going to take her 15 to 20 minutes longer. <laughs> and we play the game. We both play a game. She knows I'm playing it, but we right. do it. And that's, you know, I just have to do that. But She's, that's adapting and oh, it is. accommodating and, and but just But that knowing. was the toughest thing for me is that because I'm a big believer in, you know, respecting people's time. Right. Right. If you, if you say to be here at this time, I'm here at that time. If anything, I'm early. Right. You know, and I get that from my dad. My dad's one of those things, you know, I'll pick you up at 8 o'clock to golf. He'll be showing up at 20 after 7. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's dad, you I was said, raised too. Like, yeah. Punctuality. Yeah. Yeah, punctu yeah. So it's, that was it for me. That's the toughest thing. And, and I know it's because she's so busy and she does so many different things. But right. her, her time management, everything takes her longer than she thinks. A little bit longer? Yeah. Okay. And what do you love about her? Oh, uh, her heart. I've honestly never met anybody that cares more about anybody. She cares about everybody and everything, and she does it with a smile on her face all the time. Blows me away. Like I, I'm moody. Like I have highs, I have lows. I'm, I'm in, I'm out, and and uh, she's consistent. Like she? it's just unbelievable. Like, like people have said this thing, like it's fake. Like no, I live with her. I can tell you. Like from the moment she gets up. It's like a it's like a Disney Disney movie. It's like she's happy. She's whistling while she's making me coffee in the morning, you know? She's just that type of person. Did you find that hard to get used to because yes. it sounds like your ex was not Yes, yeah. absolutely. I was uh so the one thing with Crystal is I always said is that uh there's no awkward silences because she's always talking. And I part of me I love that. Right. But I have previous relationships. I had one a person that was very quiet. Right. So Crystal definitely challenges me, which is good for me. Which and I've, is really and good. I've been told that that is good for me because I need to be Super challenged. Good for you. And uh, you know, I didn't have that before. So I think that's the one thing. It, it took. It's taken some. Uh, it's taken some time. I mean, we've been married since 2019, so we're just over four years, right. and uh, we've been together for roughly six, seven years now. And uh, it's taken time. Like I'm still like it's, uh, you know, she's she's her own person, and she sure is. she's she's yeah, unbelievable. So yeah, she she's a beautiful soul. Okay, so if you were arrested, and we didn't know why, <laughs> why what do you think your friends and family would think about why you were arrested? Public nudity. I can almost <laughs> guarantee it. Yeah. I'm happy. There's there's a reason that I probably and probably never run for a political office, um, just because I know that you know there might be that odd Polaroid from college or whatever that might pop that up or something. Streaker, that, Brett yeah, the streaker, maybe yeah. Back in the day. I to this I hate pants. I really do. <laughs> if in in regular um, you know the regular world, if I didn't have to wear pants, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't. Shorts or like nothing. Nothing. I just nothing. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, and that's one of the things about not having the kids full time now too, is I feel very comfortable. I come home and just, I'm happy. Free flow. Free, yeah, yeah, yeah. Free willy. Yeah, free willy, that's it, yeah. <laughs> I'm not jumping over any couches or it's, yeah. It's, yeah, that's a crazy visual. Oh yeah. my goodness. Okay, so what would you say is your biggest regret in your life? If you have any. Ah, oh, that is so tough because I don't feel like I'm a big regret person. Um, Crystal always has a saying, it's what would you regret more? And then once I heard that, I'm like, yeah, you know what? Let's just do it, because what would you regret more? I don't like regretting things. So, and I think that any choice that I did make brought me to where I am today. So I can't, I don't really regret things. I it's mean, I think it's, it. um, yeah, it's really made me who I am. So. And that's the whole kind of take me take me how I am type thing. It's I'm an honest person, I'm straightforward. You know, some people can handle it, some can't. Uh, I like to joke around. I've got sarcastic I humor. I too. you know, I like to have a good time. So not every, it's not for everyone. You know, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm moody. I'm I have highs. I'm have lows. You know, and everybody sees. You know, like you see on Facebook, everything seems happy all the time. But you know, sometimes you're human. I'm I human. Know that's, yeah. I like to have those miserable moments. Have you ever suffered from mental illness at all? Or? No. Some people probably think I have, but yeah. No, I really haven't. Um, I, I, you know, I, I did have, you know, when I was going through my doors, um, I did have some, some rough times. 
and whether you call it mental illness, illness or not, but I definitely had some times where, you know, I questioned, questioned my life. I questioned my family. I questioned, um, you know, a lot of different little things at that time just because of, you know, I was worried. Um, but again, come back to it because I don't think I regret anything because I think it brought me to where I am today. I'm an amazing relationship. I have a great business. I run great charity events. Yes. I have, I have amazing, you know, I, I live a blessed life. So, I mean, I can't say that, you know, um, the decisions were wrong because this is where I am and this is what I'm doing. So things are good. Would you say that you're religious? I would say that I'm spiritual. spiritual. Um, so I'm not, I was raised a uh, Catholic mm -hmm. and I went through some, um, some questioning periods of my life that um, I believe that, uh, that God helped me through. And, um, but at the same time, I also believe that uh, I don't love the, the organized religion mm -hmm. aspect of things. So I struggle, struggle with that part of it. So um, I like to say that I, I believe that I'm the, I don't like the terminology of a religious person or a Christian mm -hmm. or um, I just like to live a good life. I, I believe that my actions are that of a Christian and uh, Christ, uh, crystals are very... Well, I was just about to, to yeah, say, so has that become a conflict with no, your... No, because I, I believe I live, a, I live a Christian life, but I just don't necessarily love the, the title of it. Right. Um, because I still question things. I still have questions. That some things I believe in, some things I don't. Um, but, I mean, I, I believe in living a good life, and I believe that is at that the is. base of what being a Christian is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, without being called a Christian, I would say that I am. So... Let's talk about all the great things that you do in this community because I've experienced your charity event that you do, yeah. um, Fight to End. Do you yeah. want to tell? I just want to know what was behind it, how you came up with it, and <sighs> the beautiful success of it. it. It really is. And that's for me. So, first off, being a born and raised Londoner, um, I went to you know, elementary school here, I went to high school, high school was downtown, CCH. Um, I went to college here at Fanshawe. Um, I'm constantly in the downtown. My business is in downtown London. Um, I see it all day, every day, and I've watched um, how London has changed, mm -hmm. and not for the better. And um, in 2019, um, Adam Malamus, a friend of mine, uh, came to me with an idea and said, you know, I want and there's, a, there's an event that I want to do and I don't know, like he has this vision. He says, I want to do an event that's big for homelessness and, or something. He says um, that, you know, we can incorporate boxing. And taken from that vision um, in 2019 to putting on an event that brought together 32 um, local entrepreneurs and business leaders that have never boxed before and putting them in a ring and teaching them how to box and uh, putting on what people have called the best event that London's ever had in 2019 uh, was something incredibly special that nobody saw coming, uh, myself included. And we really got a band of people together that kind of bought into the vision. We had people that, you know, we'd literally go up and like, would you be okay if you got punched in the face? And uh, they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, what if we trained you? No. no. <laughs> what if it's for charity? Oh, okay, maybe. Okay, we'll start here. So that's kind of where we started. And then we got, you know, some sponsors in there and uh, it really grew. And then once we had our event in 2019, uh, it blew everyone away. Sure and uh, the stories behind it were amazing. And the participants that went through it said it was life changing. And everybody that was at the event had an amazing time. And then COVID. And that killed 2020, and that killed 2021. Mm -hmm. And uh, we bought it back in 2022 thinking, ah, is this going to even work? And uh, when we brought it back in 2022, we were blown away by the amount of people that applied. Well, didn't it sell yeah. out in like a day? It did. We had, yeah. yeah, 24 hours we sold out. Yeah. Uh, we brought in some major sponsors and, uh, and got, even, got even bigger. And we went from raising 80000 the first year to 300,000 our second year which 
is absolutely incredible. incredible. And all you know, benef benefiting Youth Opportunities Unlimited and Jones Place. And uh, that for me was just something like when, when we met with charities in 2019 to look at charities that we were going to align with. Um, we interviewed quite a few. Right. And some looked at us and said, no, boxing event, get out of here. We don't want to align our charity with that. And some were very rude. And some of them were, you know, just just not on board. So, but we met with YOU. And once we found out um, all the stuff that they did and, you know, being a parent and them supporting youth and for them finding out, you know, that uh, youth are over a quarter, 26% of the homelessness in London, which is crazy. And that just, that breaks my heart as a parent. You know, you think because... Those kids didn't choose that. No, didn't. That's thrust upon them. Okay. So, I mean, I you know get a little emotional thinking about it because, you know, I, I can't imagine, you know, my kids being, they're 18 and 16, and I look at, you know, these kids that are going through the YOU program and, you know, not having, they don't have a place to live, they don't have meals, and all the wraparound support the YOU gives just uh, blew me away. We don't realize how lucky we are, We're right? blessed, we and so I'll, I'll blessed. keep saying how blessed we are because... I look around and my kids, they're spoiled when I look at that, you know, and we live a very good life and they get to go on vacations and they get, you know, the brand new iPhone or they get, you know, yeah. um, how lucky they are. And they've got, uh, they've got an education. They've got, uh, you know, they've got the opportunity to work and go to school and it's just, you know, it, it, not everyone has that and you see that. So when we aligned with them, that was something that really kind of, that hit right. and then came this year, which... We got even bigger and better. And Does uh, that bring pressure for you? Like, Do you feel like you have to keep topping it every year, or are you just doing... Yes and no. I mean, there was a pressure, because when we jumped, made the jump from eighty to 300000 that blew everyone away, ourselves included, and we realized that you know we had a team that genuinely cared, and that's really what you need. We have a small board, but it, mm -hmm. it's, it's a board that you know everybody is aligned. And I think that's the key is that uh, we keep um, going back to values. And I mean, everybody's bought into the vision. Yeah, the vision yeah. is there. And, you know, and nobody's looking to do it for, you know, gains of the, for themselves. It's, it's, it's about the charity. And that's what it comes down to. And then you look at the participants again. And I literally had participants crying and hugging me and thanking me this year and saying, you know, like, it changed my life. It, uh, you know, I had people lose 55, 60 pounds. Oh, yeah, I've talked to a few and, of your fighters. And, yeah, and I mean, and you watch them come together as a family. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that gets me now. So we've had three events. That's, you know, 96 fighters that we've had. And uh, it's unbelievable. They People from the first year, they still get together. I get people that are, you know, they're getting together for a Christmas party from last year's event. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know, like... We still get together. We're like a family now. Like you brought us together, and that's that's the part where I get where I feel like I feel like a dad. Like I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I wanted you know, all the kids to have fun, you know. And that's that's the stress for me. And that's but that's the part that it's the stories within the story that that really get me. And I see like you know a, a father and son getting a chance to spend time together and find a love behind boxing and you know do stuff like that. And that just it, it melts my heart. Or people that you know that. Uh, weren't the healthiest right. you know and they had some some heart issues and they found a way that to put in the time and they got their health together and it's literally changed their life right. like I have one guy that yeah he literally lost over 55 pounds and he says I feel like I am floating now right. you know because I'm not carrying that extra 55 pounds I've got all this energy now and then we have other people that have continued on with the sport and love it and they love, you know, there's quite a few that, you know, still do the classes and enjoy the boxing. And they found that, you know, they got a passion for boxing now. So you, you never know. It's just, there's so many stories within the stories. And that's, that's the part that I do it for is I, you know, I love helping the charity. I love giving back to the community, but it's the people. The people. The people sure. are 100%. That's, melts my heart. I love it. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. And thank you for all that you do for the community. Okay, let, let's talk about ho, ho, ho. Like, you're all, like, hoed up. Oh, oh, yeah. I was like, wait. Who's coming Who's in? Who's coming in? Hold on, yeah, yeah. Holidays. Yeah. Any plans? You know, um, K-1 
kids are 18 and 16 this year. They've decided that uh, they're going to have their own time this year. Yeah. So I have, Crystal and I have some time that uh, between Christmas and New Year's, we're not sure what we're going to do with ourselves yet. Okay. So um, we had our first Christmas uh, this past weekend. Did you? Yeah, so we had Crystal's side. They came down from Toronto and uh, her other side is in Ottawa. So we may make a trip up there. And uh, my family's all in around here. So we'll be doing that on uh, Christmas Eve. Fun. So we'll, yeah, I got two brothers and they're, uh, they'll be having, uh, Oh, I met one of your brothers at the fight. He was a character. <laughs> well, you, product of our environment. Yes. See, that's my brother. So, you know, I've got one that's uh that's a photographer and I got one that's an OPP officer. Wow. So, and we like to joke because, you know, he's the, the youngest is the OPP officer, but we feel that because of how we treated him and made him tough. That's why he's an OPP officer, so. Was he the one at the front, like really getting the crowd going, like right near the table I was sitting at, the sifted table? No, like, so I only had one of my brothers there. So that okay. was, and that was a photographer there. So that was Reed. Okay, Yeah. so was so. it Reed that was hyping everyone up? Uh, he could have been, yeah. Yeah, is he quite? Yes, yeah. Boisterous? He's, um, he's not as boys, boisterous as, as boisterous. me, maybe, but I mean, he's. Okay, maybe yeah, it wasn't him. Might not have been him. Okay. Yeah. There's someone up there. I stuck him in the corner to start with, so oh, maybe he, okay. he worked so his way up to this. To, okay. To, yeah. <laughs> Do you set New Year's resolutions? I don't. You don't? I okay. really don't. I just, I just hope that every year is better than last year. And um, I mean, even with my business, that was like, have you set your financial goals? And maybe, I'm like, no, I really haven't. I mean, I just, I just feel things are going to work out. I really do. I think I put enough good out into the world. I mean, people support me and I support them. And I'm a big, I'm a big believer in giving back. And I think that's, that goes, what goes around comes around. I really do. So, I mean, you know, my business is not a, a new business. And, uh, you know, I, what do you think your life purpose is? Wow. I would like to think that I hope at the end of it that my body is fully used up and there is nothing left and that I can say that I gave everything I possibly could to everybody else. And I think for me, um, that is my purpose, is just to be that person that everybody needs. I want to be that person that, that people can rely on that people can talk to, that people can, you know, know will be the connector, that will be the person that, uh, you know, you need someone for your business, you need somebody for this, you know, I just, I want to be that person that helps. And I don't think, I, I, I don't know what that means, but I mean, I just, I just know how it feels. Right. I like that. I like that. And I, so my last question for you, can you believe it? It's already... Like, Get out of here, really? Yeah, that went fast. This is the last one on camera, though. We're going to just... <laughs> We're going to keep going. <laughs> um, so, if you could bring everybody into one room that you have ever met, hmm. dead or alive, hmm? and you could only look for one person, who would it be? Oh, shit. Hmm. It would probably be. Me? It's tough. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough. Uh, it would have to be one of my grandfathers. And, I mean, I had a special connection with both of them. Um, my mom's father, um, Orville, he, for me, um, they both left too soon. Both my grandfathers did. But... Um, he was a no-nonsense army man, and uh, I always felt I had a special connection with him. And the one thing he always told me, and I, I use this um, now that I um, at the boxing gym, is, uh, he used to come up to me and he'd say, two weeks in the hospital, sudden death, you choose. <laughs> you know, and it was something that, as a child, I mean, it was something that it always, it always. He was joking, obviously, but I mean, it was one of those things that it just always stuck with me, and I just, I always wanted to learn more from him. Like he lived such an amazing life, you know, being in the, you know, he's a air force. He used to jump out of airplanes, and he was just, 
just a crazy person, but I never knew that side of him, right? Right. But, um, you know, I, I wish I knew more about him. And I think for me, that would be um, someone I'd just love to sit and talk with. Um, you know, everybody else in my life, I feel pretty confident would be, you know, be able to co-mingle at the party and have a good time. But <laughs> I'd like to just sit down with my grandfather and have a good chat with him. I, I do. I always say this. I always say I'm done with the questions and then I keep going because something else comes into my head. Um, if you could be any character for, from Friends, who would you be and why? <laughs> I don't want to make a bad joke now, but I'm not going to. But you um, can. We're on Raw. Yeah, I know. I, I'd make a hot tub and uh, Chandler joke, but probably I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go. But uh, <laughs> I'm... Uh, uh, I like to think that I'm a good combination of a lot of the characters together. Um, you know, at any given time, I, I feel like I can relate with Joey, and then there's other times that I feel that I can relate with Chandler or even Ross sometimes, you know, some of the bad decisions he's made and things like that. But uh, I don't know. At the end of the day, I'd, I'd probably say probably Chandler because I believe that, you know, um, I've always had a pretty good sense of humor, and I think that's something that... Uh, I'm always the person that's going to make the joke, whether it's whether it's appropriate, appropriate or not. Or not appropriate, yeah, yes. I mean, I, my filter is not one of my strongest. I love it. I <laughs> but love it. That's why you're here. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what it's all about, right? So, yeah, I, I would say Chandler, and hopefully my life goes a lot longer. Than this. Yes. Yeah, and I'm probably going to end up in a hot tub later tonight, so I just want to. There you go. Yeah. You're setting the stage yeah. already. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to throw it to my team, and this is raw because they weren't expecting this, but. Yes. A question for Brett. Guys, come on, we're like... I was going to make him do the dance from the golf tournament. Oh, I forgot he was at the golf tournament. Shit, what dance did I make? I don't even remember what dance I did. <gasps> to that horrible song. That song that, that I a, never heard. One to keep song. One Margarita. That, that was a great song. I, <laughs> I never heard it until I, I met you. See, this is... what. Uh, I bring joy to people all over the place. You, you don't do. even realize. You do. Because that became the song of the summer. That was on TikTok everywhere, yeah. right? Like that was. Yeah, it just yeah. wasn't living on TikTok. That's gonna be one of his songs, Brett. <laughs> yeah, one, one margarita. margarita, two margarita. Do you know that song? It's a good time. It was a great dance. It's a good time. <laughs> so yes. maybe you can do that at the end. Sure. Yeah, everyone else yeah. has to Sure. Yeah. Is that it? A couple Is more shots, maybe. That? Yeah. I wasn't prepared. So okay. okay, what comes to the top? Nothing. Nothing. The question was to do a dance. You got away with yeah, that. Yeah, but I, I've met him before at the golf tournament. One time. One, One time. time. One margarita. Yeah. I recognize you from Mo Mondays too, way back. Did you ever? Were you ever at my what, talk? What? That's when I talked about my vasectomy. Actually, oh, really? was at Mo Mondays, and that was a, such a crazy experience because they brought out um, uh, a sign language person, right? Because there was someone that was um, deaf in the the audience. And for me, giving a talk and having someone sign along with me while I was explaining a vasectomy <laughs> was the greatest thing in my life because everything I said, I wanted to watch and see what she signed afterwards because it was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, basically, yeah. Everything you could do and couldn't do and you know, mm, mm, uh, you know everything. And the, the facial expressions, everything with it, that was for me. And I still want to find that uh, yes. video because I think we that would be that back. absolutely <laughs> hilarious. So somebody has it somewhere. Yeah, and I know do. it's out there. But because I think we'll for me, it. that would be one of my favorite uh, things. If I could find that video of this woman with sign language while I explained <laughs> the experience of my vasectomy. Oh, my God, it was pretty that. amazing. So, yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, You've got one now? Finally. Okay. Yes, all right. Okay, so I feel like you've accomplished a lot, you've learned a lot, you've done a lot, you've been through a lot. So if you had a piece of advice to give somebody, maybe during a certain stage or age of their life, like what age or stage, I guess, would you give the advice to and what would that piece of advice be? Do you want to be the fucking host of the show? Wow. Like, are you vying for my No, position? I love this. Okay, so th there's so many levels to this yeah. one. So, <laughs> Just trying to steal one job. piece of advice in any stage. Um, I think I've been giving this advice because now I get to do this with my son. So I'm seeing it now where um, 
the person that you think you're in love with right now may not be the person that you're in love with. And she just got engaged. And I'm not, I'm not, not saying that, but I'm saying for, for my son at that age and when you're in your teenage years, um, cause it's very rare that you, yes. you have someone that, um, that's kind of funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> but it's not funny, but it's funny. It is but funny. I mean, for me, I think, um, I look at it through the eyes of what he's going through now and what my daughter will be going through. And I look at the relationships I had in high school and college and after college and the poor decisions and different things that were made. And I look at my kids now, and they're so much better people than I was. Um, but it's as crazy a, how that happens, eh? Like yeah, I think my son's a way I, better person at seventeen than I, made, I am at fifty. I made terrible decisions, like yeah. terrible decisions. And you know, I'm sure they've made terrible decisions too, but nowhere near what I did. And I think that the only thing I can tell them is that you know, it's live every day. Like it means something, but don't let every day control you. So I think I where I see them, um, you know, their first love and the first time they get broken up with and having to deal with that, they deal with kids nowadays. They don't know how to deal with, they don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to communicate and they don't know how to deal with pain and, or loss. And I think it's, not that it was easier for us when we were younger, but it definitely seems easier because, I mean, we just dealt with it. Whether it was healthy or not, we just dealt with it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I see, you know, all these young people in, in relationships and, oh, I'm so in love and this will be the person I'm with for the rest of my life. It may not be. Right. And, you know, I hope you're with your person for, you know, that you've met your soulmate and you've met your other half. And, you know, and if, if you have, it's, it's, a, it's a special thing. And, you know, I never had that feeling until I did, yeah. right? And I think once you know, you really do know, and you're not settling. And, you know, I, I said I'd never get married again. And never I- Never say never. Never say never, because I mean, here I am and I'm happier than I've ever been. So, I mean, but I had to go through a lot of crap. And I mean, that's for me, it, watching my kids and giving them advice, um, I feel I've got a wealth of knowledge to give and whether they want to listen or not because I mean yeah you know if I watched my son and he just got broken up with and he had to go through that and, oh. and it, everybody says oh it's okay it'll pass you know it's it's just you know don't worry the pain will go away he doesn't want to hear that he doesn't yeah. oh he doesn't understand that but so is I'm, that heart-wrenching as a yeah, dad yes absolutely I've been broken up with tons of times and I mean some for valid reasons, some for yeah, bullshit reasons. But right. I mean, I think it's uh, it's made me stronger and caused some broken pieces that have right. caused me more problems in future relationships. But here we are. Here you are. So I mean, that's all I can say is I, I any advice I can give is just live every day for the moment. Make your decisions based on that. Make yourself happy. That's what's something that you know is so hard to do, but get right with yourself and make sure that you're good because you're not going to be good for anybody else unless you're good. 100%. Your yeah. turn, Jake. You're going to make me trap talk that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can. I didn't think he talked. This is amazing. <laughs> I was, I thought he was going to start, so, I th I thought he was gonna start <laughs> signing at me. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your, what's the best meal you've ever had and also the worst meal? Oh, I love wow. that question. Oh, this is a good one too. So I am a foodie. We need Jake to like speak up a little yeah, bit Yeah, I like this. So um, I'm all about experiences. So some of the best meals I've ever had are in exotic places, uh, different places. Um, one of the best meals I've ever had, um, I was in Halifax. Um, five fishermen in Halifax, highly recommend it. Um, couldn't get a seat, ended up sitting at the bar ordering a bottle of wine with Crystal, we had, you know, we both ordered our appetizers and we said, no, let's just get a lobster. So we had a lobster, we split a lobster and then we both had our own main course dinners. So, so it was, I was so full, best dinner I've ever had and best, it always atmosphere, everything like that. So I had everything to do with where I was, who I was with, 
and the food was kind of secondary, but it was the best meal I've ever had. So for me, that would be the best. Um, worst meal I've ever had. Please don't say it's something Crystal cooked. No, <laughs> so, listen, Crystal has a lot of strengths. <laughs> Cook, cooking is not one of them. No. Uh, I'm the chef in the house. I'm the foodie. I'm the taste texture person. That's right. I, I do the cooking, and there's a reason for that. So she's amazing. Every other every other room in the house, she's amazing. Right. Just stay out of the kitchen. Okay. Um, but uh, worst meal I've ever had, and in recent mem memory, again, it was an experience. But I was in India. I was in India earlier this, earlier this year. Yes, you were for a wedding, right? Out for a wedding yeah. and crazy experience. Uh, being part of an Indian wedding and everything to go with that, but uh, we were trying to please our driver that we had, and he wanted to take us to one of his friend's places, and it was maybe not the best experience. So we we showed up. It was uh, the atmosphere was not great. It was. Uh, uh, the smells were not my favorite, and the food, it's the first time I can ever have food go in that immediately wanted to come back out, oh, and uh, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. Do you know what you ate? Uh, no, I can't no. even tell. Was, it was a chicken dish, which was uh, rare for, because we were vegan for like four days there, right. and alcohol free, which nobody told me. There's certain areas there, so that was a wild surprise, but... Uh, <laughs> But You're no, making was, up for it now. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I do like to have a good time. Yes, so, of course. with or without alcohol. But uh, so, yeah, no, it was uh, that was my in most recent memory. That was a meal that just couldn't stay down. And I'm not a person that that ever really gets sick like that. So, wow. it was not a good experience. That would be that'd be the worst. But uh, the worst. yeah, a lot of my best ones are about experiences. I didn't ask him this question. Who would be your ride or die? Crystal. Crystal. Yeah, if I'm going in a uh, any kind of crisis, she's my other half. Like she's the plan ahead. Think of every single possible thing that could go wrong. That's you know that's her. Right. Um, and uh, I'm the more logical step by step through. And yeah, ride or die, hundred percent. Because I yes. when I say she's the yin to my yang, hundred percent. Because uh, we really kind of balance each other out, and she keeps me honest. Yeah. Like she'll call me on my bullshit. I love that. Which is, I need it. We need to have her on the couch, I, and let's see what she has. I to agree. Say. I think you should actually. I wonder if she'll say you're her ride or die. Yeah, I bring her on. Bring her, I'm gonna bring her. You on. bring her. On. That's a promise. That. That you is. Make it happen. You make it happen. All right, Beth. Put it on the list. Put it on the list. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I would love One to see that. One of the best that. realtors. Because I need to know what this means. Don't tell oh, me because I, I have not had the conversation. Like, this is her in every picture. Yeah. And I don't I don't know what that means. Like, is she going to twinkle her? Again, that's that's how, uh, that was one of my almost pickup lines for her. Really? Yeah. Because I said, I said, hey, Crystal. And I did it to her and she didn't know who I was. Oh, really? So she had to go find out who I was. <laughs> Who's that guy? He obviously knows me. Oh, okay, so this didn't come from you. That came no. from her. Okay, but you picked up on it. I picked up on it, yeah, because right. I was this observant, and I was into her. Fun so. story. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. So, yeah, have her on, because, yeah, she's much more fun than I am. She probably will be. Right? <laughs> I have a lot more to say. No, this was great. This hey. was great. Thank Bye. you so much. Let's get